Hello again, this is Alex with MasterChartsTrading.com and this is Market Recap for Friday, September 16th, 2022. So always please don't hit, forget to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel and share this video with others. Uh, your likes is literally the fuel that keeps this channel going. Additionally, uh, the way the YouTube uh, measures progress and measures popularity is by likes. So. Uh, the more your likes you hit, um, the more people will see this video and more people will benefit from this video. So again, don't forget to hit the like button. Stocks approach new uh, June lows and I think uh, if they break below those lows, we will see a sort of like a waterfall event. High yield bonds are also next to June lows and they're testing them as we speak. Uh, so together these two facts I think are uh, also not good for stocks. Additionally there is a bearish market breadth divergence I'll show. So all of this taken together is just not good for stocks. We could see a collapse uh, in the near term. We will show a trade example that uh, some of the uh, members of Master Chef's trading took uh, for FedEx and the drop was pretty in impressive. Uh, so if you took a short side, uh, congratulations. Gold also made a new low, possibly in anticipation of new highs for the dollar. We'll look at that. And Bitcoin is also testing June lows and it could just unravel completely. So let's look at that. If you're a subscriber, stay tuned. I have a uh, few stocks to cover, not as many as last week. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, consider signing up by going to mastercharttrading.com. Click on sign up. I have uh, two products on two packages, trading indicators and newsletters, and two packages of those, and I'll show you uh, what those indicators and packages are. So, looking at S&P 500, uh, First of all, uh, this is a candlestick chart. So this green and red candlesticks are basically each of those candlesticks is a day's worth of activity. Now, if you're really freaked out by uh, candlesticks, we can make it into a line chart. It actually makes very little difference. So line chart just shows the closing price. It does not show high, low, or open. However, candlesticks show open, high, low, and close. So um, just very briefly, so for example, this huge enormous candlesticks on, candlestick on 13th of September, we opened, you, know, you read, read from left to right, we opened here at the top at around 41.30, uh, 41.37. Uh, we made a high sometime throughout the day at 41.75. We made a low sometime throughout the day uh, at 3938 and we closed at 3950. See how easy it was? Open, high, low, close. Now, looking at this chart, there are also four lines. There's the green, blue, red, and yellow line. So very briefly, for stocks, S&P 500 is a stock, as long as the stock remains above the blue line, we keep buying it on a, any new touch of the blue line. However, once the stock closes below this yellow line, so again, this is for stocks. For Forex, we use the just blue and the red line. But for stocks, we use the yellow line as a bearish indicator. So once the stock hits the uh, yellow line, we say, okay, this is now a bearish security. In other words, it is now in the downtrend. Indeed, this is what's been happening um, once the yellow line was hit once the close was below the yellow line we were looking for a bounce towards the red support resistance line so this line is exactly what i sell these are the indicator lines and you can have the same indicator lines on your chart on tradingview.com they are available for tradingview.com currently latest short signal actually occurred this week Following a bounce from last week, we had a, you know, once again, this is what's called a bear market rally. So we had we hit a low here on 6th of September, we had a bear market rally for four days, 
and then it, it was just bad. I mean, look at the size of this candle. It's big, right? It's big and it's red. It means that we pretty much sold throughout the day, non-stop. We continued selling throughout the week. Today we hit a new low. We're approaching this yellow support resistance line. Additionally, if we zoom out a little bit, these June lows are actually extremely important. I think that if we don't hold those lows, uh, stocks will unravel. We can look at the weekly chart. What does weekly mean? Again, each candlestick here, but now it's a whole week's worth of activity. See, it says W. Um, we don't have to use them, but if you really don't, you know, I can show it to you as a line chart. So there's line, but lines don't give me as many, much information as I wanted to. So candlesticks are easier uh, if you're a trader. Anyways, so this week, notice this big red candlestick, uh, just quite bearish candlestick also. Uh, we closed below the lows, uh, below the previous closes. Uh, for example, from 29th of August and from 6th of September. And this is the lows I'm talking about from uh, June 13, week of June 13. I think if we close below it, we will like we'll have a, a big fall. So where would we fall? Um, I mean, it's really difficult to estimate, but a reasonable amount uh, would be like the depth of this little pattern. That's a 17% pattern. So, you know, 2600, 2900, that's it's a reasonable amount uh, to consider uh, after a break of this lows from June. Um, hasn't happened yet, but it's 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 quite likely and I'm going to show you why I think it's quite likely. So for S&P 500, uh, this is the pattern as we speak. Uh, we are approaching this yellow support resistance line. Um, and additionally, we're approaching this lows from June. Uh, this uh, Dow Jones, uh, actually today, uh, it was gonna, it, it looked like it was gonna close below this yellow support resistance line. It didn't, but uh, it doesn't really change the picture that much because of the correlations between st uh, various stock indices. It's a little bit weaker than S&P, uh, and it's also approaching uh, the lows from June. So. Uh, Dow Jones, you know, doing pretty much the same thing as S&P, with a big candlestick here on 13th of September, so generally speaking the same general pattern. Uh, NASDAQ actually is even weaker than both Dow Jones and S&P, notice that we did close below this uh, yellow support resistance line, and now we are super close to June lows. June lows right there at 16th of June at 11,100 or so. We're at 11,900. So we're really close to the, to the lows. We're like 7% um, away, which is not a lot for stocks. So especially for NASDAQ, NASDAQ moves quite a bit. So we need to be ready for this uh, drop and I think, again, once the June lows are taken out, we could see a waterfall event. In other words, we just really go down hard. Russell 2000 small caps index, uh, a little bit different, but not by much. Again, we're retesting this yellow support resistance line. Um, and then E4 when it doesn't hold, I think uh, next stop is again the June lows. And if those don't hold, then I don't know how low it is. I don't know how low it will go, but most likely quite low. So um, here's what's happening with uh, junk debt. So high yield bonds, why are, the <coughs> why are high yield bonds important? Here's GNK on the weekly chart. Uh, I want you to pay attention to this yellow graph at the bottom. So this is a correlation between S&P 500 and the junk debt. Notice that uh, on the weekly chart, it's, it's quite high. Uh, daily chart might give more noise, but overall um, the correlations between uh, stocks and high yield bonds are quite high. In other words, they're doing most likely, most of the time they're doing the same thing. So E for when junk debt, I mean, we're literally at the June lows. Today we almost, almost closed below uh, the June lows. 
but then we rallied at the very end of the day so we went as low as uh, 9031 uh, the June 13th low is um, 18, 8981 so we we're like within a point basically uh, from the lows uh, so we need to watch it quite carefully I think again if the June lows from junk that doesn't hold do not hold I think we can see a collapse um, of stocks so because of the correlations between uh, stocks and high yield bonds again I'm thinking that high yield bonds uh, are actually leading the stock market lower notice how junk that is currently already significantly below this yellow support resistance line uh, versus uh, let's say Russell or whatever they're still above it so this is a bearish divergence uh, stocks are being led by high yield bonds to the downside <clears throat> right now let's look at uh, market breadth so my favorite measure of market breadth is uh, you can graph it on stockcharts.com symbol is uh, dollar sign NYUD which is New York Stock Exchange advances less decline volume line so how is it built you can also uh, go to chart school on their page and look for advanced decline line and it will tell you how it's built without going too much into detail let's pay attention to this line above so <clears throat> this line above is the actual advanced decline line and notice what happened it's today um, the number it, it's just a number it means nothing it, it's minus 7749 uh, versus this previous low from June at minus 6973 so today's reading is more negative okay so far so good right down below here we have S&P 500 and today's reading is 3873 at close and previous low um, from June was about uh, let me see like 3600 or so I think if I'm not mistaken let me double check uh, it was um, like 3650 okay so notice what's happening here so we have the market breadth line the advanced decline uh, volume line is leading the market lower so in other words it's already hitting new lows before the stock index uh, was able to hit the new lows this is called a bearish divergence so we have three things going against the stock market we have s p 500 given repeated bearish signals where the downward facing arrows are those are short signals so far they're actually successful um, and we're approaching the lows from june we have the junk that high yield bonds um, super close to making new lows notice this june lows here but i think um, you know once uh, when or if they're taken out again we can see a waterfall event uh, and together with the market breadth I think uh, the evidence is really high that we'll see a move lower for stocks I mean of course anything is possible we might bounce around here maybe another uh, bear market rally similar to what we had here um, in you know last week but I think the bigger direction is clearly down so uh, at master shares trading we are shorting we're thinking about you know that the stocks will continue lower so when or if um, we will turn around notice we are a bull market above 4370 about the blue line we haven't gotten there so when or if we get there we will worry about uh, buying stocks but right now we're worrying about selling stocks or selling them short i wanted to give an example of what we do how we trade at master chairs trading and this is an example of fedex so if you heard in the news today um, fedex uh, just uh, kind of had a bad earnings report so notice they surprised to the downside 33 percent surprised to the downside i mean they made money it's not like they're not making money but they made a lot less money than they planned to make they got punished really badly 
Um, however, this this you know this is just today. Uh, y- you can't. I mean, unless you have insider information from yesterday, and then you just you know sold it short yesterday, and then today it collapsed. Wonderful, but we don't have insider information, um, so we're looking at the way stocks are behaving, and the stocks are behaving. Notice that uh, a void was back here in September of last year, exactly a year ago. So that's the beginning of a downtrend, beginning of the bear market. And then from then on, we're you know thinking about selling short. Latest alert, uh, alerts rather, uh, were back here in June, and then the latest alert right there on 9th of August. This was actually sent to my subscribers. Yes, a few days we kind of bounced around. We didn't really, you know, go immediately in our favor. But again, our stop is higher at the blue support resistance line. We got close to it right there on 16th of August, but we didn't go above it. So that means the stop was never hit. You should have held strong. You know, let's say you bought puts here, you buy puts, meaning you express your bearish bias. If you have an opportunity to outright sell short, you can just do that as well. But I think the easier way is to buy puts. You can also sell calls, but I would not recommend it because of infinite liability. If you buy puts, you're only liable for the actual, uh, you know, how much you paid for the put, put option. Again, if you don't understand this, you know, send me a message. You can also contact me uh, on tradingyou.com uh, at Master Charts. So today. I mean, it already went to our target like a few days ago here on 2nd of September or 6th of September. But then, my God, it just collapsed. It's 30% in our favor. And 30% move um, for a stock translates usually like around three times or more uh, move for the option. So, I mean, if you had the short term option, like let's say it expired in January of 2023. That's easily three times, just today. Um, So, yeah, that's how much they move sometimes. So this is easily 100% trade uh, in your favor, even though the stock itself moved only 30%. So, again, congratulations to the subscribers. Uh, It's weird to say congrats when you can see a stock collapse. But, again, if you are uh, a trader, you, you, you don't really worry about too much about the direction you worry more about um, you know are you positioned correctly do you want to be buying or selling and we definitely don't want to be buying we want to be selling we want to be selling short all right uh, switching gears dxy dollar index um, last week we made a new multi-year it's like 20 year high i want to say um let's see this is a a weekly chart so we can kind of zoom out and see how far we have to go back so this is a 20 year high you see it is overextended i wrote here overextended but really the pullback didn't materialize so dollar still seems to be going strong um you can look at euro euro is not doing great so again if you um travel if you like to travel great time to go to europe uh, but maybe things will even get better if you have dollars and maybe euro will continue lower i just don't see the low right now um and additionally the way things are going with that the reason the reason why i don't think um, this is the bottom yet for euro or the top for the dollar is because of gold so <laughs> looking at gold it's very interesting actually okay so this is a weekly chart and notice where the lows were march august and uh, now the july lows here 
So we closed at 1675. So we definitely broke the July low. It was 1680. Um, the low from August 2021 was at 1677. So we broke that. Okay. And then low from March 2021 was at 1676. So <laughs> well, we are literally by a dollar right now. And we have 17 more minutes in the after hours where I'm hovering. So we're right now at 1675. And it looks like we're going to break this lows literally by a dollar. Uh, the point is, I think that gold is in a downtrend. So because dollar is in an uptrend, um, and we're looking at this currency pair, XAU divided by USD, this is gold divided by US dollar, the lower part of this equation is pulling this market pair lower. And um, yeah, so it looks like we broke for sure, we're breaking this lows on 21st of July. Um, so, so far, looks like gold is headed down. And this is interesting because uh, people keep talking about inflation, but gold is signaling something else. Gold is signaling deflation right this instant. Again, I mean, this is not exactly the breakdown I was looking for. I was hoping for a significant, especially weekly close, um, you know, below this uh, previous lows but looks like we rallied at the very last minute of today so not exactly yet definitive but overall I think um, if anything we're seeing deflationary forces at work uh, so we will watch this quite carefully in the next few weeks and see if uh, deflation will take hold um, this obviously has to do with uh, Federal Reserve they're trying to fight inflation and I think they are succeeding on some front but at the same time stock market is just doesn't like it at all finally Bitcoin so Bitcoin kind of similar to gold um, I was expecting a breakdown uh, of the June lows where I'm hovering June lows for Bitcoin we're super close but we haven't gotten there so it's possible that Bitcoin will break down. If it breaks down, then I don't know how low it will go. Again, I keep saying that it could go just disappear. Bitcoin just completely disappear. Can it happen? I, I don't see a problem with that really, but you know, people will argue with me. So, you know, if you have a, a comment, make a comment. Can Bitcoin completely disappear? All right, that's um, head over to mastercharttrading.com. Click on sign up, sign up for one of the products. Again, I have trading indicators, newsletters, and two packages. So trading indicators are these lines on the chart. And you can again trade pretty much any security. For example, here's FedEx. Once again, a very good trade. In this case, we were playing it on the downside, but you can also do the opposite and play things on the upside uh, when or if the bull market will start but for now we can buy puts and uh, make good money off the puts so using these indicators the green blue red and yellow line is basically all you need to make a informed decision of how to trade and what to trade they're available for trading view interface this is tradingview.com interface you only need a free trading your account so once you register uh, on my side master Chess trading i'll open the door for you on trading view if you are uh, also want my newsletter then sign up for that i send out various uh, you know alerts for example fedex was actual alert so you can see a short alert short alert actual alert to my subscribers um, this happens basically on daily i send out daily alerts and weekly uh, on fridays uh, or on the weekend i send out another separate video in addition to the one you're watching and again uh, best thing is of course to get both trading indicators and newsletters and currently at 59.95 per month it's the best deal out there if you need one-on-one uh, -on -one access then at 259.95 per month you get 60 minutes one-on-one -on -one zoom zoom uh, screen sharing session with me that's it for this week's recap. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for watching and have another great trading week. Bye-bye.